the squats you be doing. Look at that. Oh, did one just fall down? Okay, it's hot. Even though I have this hoodie on, it's still hot. I'm trying to sit under my tomatoes, my pineapple tomatoes for some shade, some respite from the sun. Okay, I'm so weak. I'm from Houston. I should be used to this. Okay, so this is my end of June garden update plus tour. So this is going to be a long video. So that's your warning. And if I haven't introduced myself to you, I am Nikki, the messy homesteader helping and encouraging gardeners with small spaces to turn them into garden oases. Is oasis this right? Anyway, y'all know what I'm trying to say. So let's get started. Okay, so let's start with the changes in the garden. I made uh, two or three um, big changes and I'll start with that. So remember I was telling y'all in a few videos back that I didn't want my garden to just be a hustle garden just for food. I wanted some beauty, some elegance, just some eye candy in my garden. So I've been planting more flowers because I don't really do flowers because I don't have the space. And oh, I just want to, I want to walk into my garden and just feel, hmm, instead of, oh Lord, let me go see what I got to do now with these weeds. So I put down some stepping stones and I sprinkled some a uh, dichondra um, ground cover to go between the stepping stones. So as soon as I walk into my garden, if I enter from this way, I can have this woo saw feeling, okay? So I'm just setting the tone like that. You know how you dress a plate when you, when you have dinner, you put a little parsley, some chives, a plate with some ice cream and it's got some drizzled chocolate and caramel and some sprinkles, some nuts and stuff versus just grabbing a scooper and then just plopping it on a dirty bowl and just hoping you got a spoon nearby. I want the whole ambiance. So anyway, so I put down some stepping stones. I'm really pleased with that. So I'm gonna go back to the big box stores and get some more and then just continue to um, uh, fill in the pathways um, in the garden. The big blue box had run out of stones. So I'm waiting for some more, some more stones to come in. But anyway, we're starting off on the right path. No pun intended. So right here I have uh, I planted some alisum um, to fill in the border. So when you come in, you can see flowers. And I have um, a hollyhocks, which I've never grown before, but they're absolutely gorgeous cottage flowers. I have some here and here. And to show you what they look like, come with me. They look like this, like this, like this, like this, like this. Like this. And like that, this has got to be like shack height. It is so tall. And then like every day I get flowers that just keep opening up and they keep climbing up the branch or the, the stem. So I cannot wait for that to open um, fully. And I have some pink ones around the corner that you can't see just yet. That was the first major change, the beautification of my hustle garden. The second change I made, you notice there's a lot of sun in here. Well, the sun is finally up because we're still in June gloom, but you can see those townhomes behind me because I had trees, all kinds of trees that were shading my garden over here. And everything was growing so slowly. So uh, my son and I uh, last weekend or like Father's Day weekend, we chopped down like four or five trees and I'll show you pictures of um, what it looked like. Sorry, y'all, I, I felt like I cheated on you. I did not film it because my son was all grouchy and attitude-y and then, cause he hadn't eaten. He just come back from football practice. So I'm like, let's go. So, but we did it. So I have all this light, all this sun. And look, my Pakistani uh, mulberries have taken off, just taken off. Um, my figs are producing so many figs. Okay, we're gonna get to that in a second. So so that was the second, that was probably the biggest change. It was just getting rid of those trees. I kept some and I'm going to eventually get rid of those, but I'm gonna have to use them. They're gonna be useful for now because I'm staking my heirloom tomatoes to them and I'm gonna run up some cucumbers up them. So, so that's the second change. Now the third change, now y'all remember from my previous videos, I had, wait, I don't know if the sun's in the way. Look over my head. You see that lattice panel? Well, I had those 
right here when you open when you came into the garden okay i had them on both sides they were raggedy they were falling apart and so and they weren't really um stable so i went and grabbed um some of my old cattle panels and then i went and got two more and i put them right here um and made an archway so you can see let's see if y'all can see oh uh, here let me move over here okay let me see if y'all can see um now it's a little uh in rigged <laughs> but um so that's the cattle panel and then for my blueberry grapes that are already taken off i just i don't have time i can't wait on my husband to build a pagoda um or, or pagola excuse me so i just threw that up there i'm going to r fix that y'all don't don't be comment to like girl that thing's gonna fall apart i know it's gonna fall apart it's looking precarious now so i'm gonna step over here um, i'm going to adhere it and tie it up and tie it down oh that nice little mulberry right here this is my other mulberry uh tree so that was the third thing i did so my grapes were starting to my grapes were like all over the ground, so I needed to get them off the ground. This is temporary. In the next garden update in July, this should be, hopefully it's gone. Um, this is just the spirit of what I'm trying to do, but that will be taken care of. So that's the third major change in the garden. Now an update on the straw. Y'all know I put the straw in my garden um, some weeks back. It's been, I love it. It's been doing really well. I haven't had any grass seed come up. The only thing that, and it's not a major thing, but when I'm fertilizing, I have to um, kind of move the uh, the grass around a bit to make sure, like if I'm using a granular fertilizer, I wanna make sure it gets down into the ground. So I kind of move the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the mulch around, the straw around so I can get uh, the fertilizer. But usually I use a liquid, so it's not that big of a deal. Okay, so those are my three updates. Um, now, let's go on the tour. I really don't want to make this long because I have some transplanting to do. Um, actually, I have some seed. I'm dropping seeds, and it's June 27th today. So, um, I'm all over the place. Okay, so here is my blueberry row over here. Now, you don't see a lot of blueberries because we had a party at a neighbor's house. And my son, one of my sons, was like, oh, I'm gonna bring some blueberries. And I didn't think much of what he meant by that. I thought he was gonna take some for himself. And so he comes over, I'm sitting there chilling, and he's got a cup, big cup full of all our blueberries to share. I was like, don't do that again. Them are blueberries. More specifically, my blueberries. See, I, I put all this work in, growing food and stuff. The squirrels take the peaches, and my son gives the blueberries to 20 plus strangers um, that don't appreciate the love and care of the blueberries. And then they love the blueberries, hmm, of course. Anyway, so all these blueberries with only a few blueberries, and most of them are uh, not even close to being blue. So uh, here I have my Meyer. Ugh. My Meyer lemon tree, yes, it's too close to my grapevine back there, but I have a strategy for what I'm doing, so don't worry about it. This is gonna kind of be changed another time. I have some issues because I have actually pipes, irrigation down below and above, and the pipes, I, I don't think we can dig them up. They're so deep and they're so big, and so that's why the tree is there versus being like right here because there's a pipe right down there. But I have a lot of Meyer lemons, they grow like crazy here. This branch broke when I was trying to put the trellis up for the grapes, so I just kind of rigged it to keep it going. But so far, it's not looking ill or mad about having its um, its branch broken, a little triage there. I don't have any grapes, any buds on my blueberry grapes. And that's probably because because we're still in June gloom. We don't get a lot of sun during this time of the month. Well, you see now we have sun. Usually the sun comes out in the afternoon, but it's fleeting. So that's why I'm out here now, just to get some sun. I was out here earlier and it was actually cold. It was in the 60s. So, um, so May and June, um, plants grow very slowly until July when we have more sun. So I have a lot of leaves, but no grapes yet. 
So my Tangelo, which has been struggling forever, I don't know what's going on, but this is the problem child. I will deal with it another time. Um, you guys have seen the, these areas before. My Pakistani, I don't know what kind, or what variety this is. I just know it's grafted, but something, I'm gonna grab one right here. These are the Pakistanis. Let me see if I have any Pakistani mulberries. I'm sorry, I think I call that one Pakistani. That one's not a Pakistani mulberry. Oh, I do, look, okay. So this is the Pakistani of origins unknown. Let's see how small that is. Now, look at this. This is a Pakistani mulberry. Look at that, compared to that. And this one's not even that dark yet. I really wanna eat it, but it's not ready. But man, oh man, but they're both tasty. So y'all know that my dog was running through the garden to get to the squirrels who were getting to the peaches and she broke my um, sunflower, my mammoth sunflower, but I had another one next to it growing and it started to sprout. I mean, it started to really take off. So the, um, the stem is not as thick, but it's getting there. You can see it's starting to have a little flower. So a little minor setback because I should have had a big flower head by now. That is my hollyhock. I believe that's the summer carnival mix. And I'm really happy with that. It's so tall, y'all. It is, it's gotta be eight feet tall. It's gorgeous, I love it. Okay, so I'm really happy about this. Y'all look. Okay, so where's my stool? I must be getting old. All right, I need to sit down. Okay. Okay, I'm sitting down, no shame. Okay, so so these are this is my heirloom area. So I have my San Marzano tomatoes here, the cherry 100s behind me, and behind the cherries, I have the brandy wine, and then behind the brandy wine, or adjacent to the brandy wine, I have my pineapple um, tomatoes. But I finally, oh, it's splitting. I finally have blushing tomatoes. Let me flip it. Now, I don't know why they're turning red at the bottom because it's cooler down here and it's not really any sun. It's quite shady as you can see, but they're blushing and the ones on top are just green. So I, I find that curious. Do you guys know why um, they're blushing in the shade? I don't know, but this one is splitting. Well, it has split, that's okay. But these are gorgeous. So I'm gonna pick these, oh, this one is splitting. So I'm gonna pick these today. I just get so happy seeing them. Look at that. It's like Christmas ornaments or lights. It's so pretty, I like that. I read my comments and some of you have said that you're procrastinating, you haven't dropped any seeds or you have and you haven't been in your garden for like a couple of weeks. All I'm saying is I'm in garden zone 10B and yes, I have a long growing season even now, I'm still dropping seeds because one, gardening errors, gardening laziness, pest, dogs, something's always coming up. So even people who seem to have everything together or um, perfect conditions or space or whatever, even those people have to keep planting seeds this late in the season or this early in summer. So instead of just watch the video, please, but then go out and drop a couple of seeds. Look, let me show you, okay? This is just a PSA, because sometimes I feel really sad because you guys, some of you really wanna get out there and garden and you just don't have the will. It's like working out and you're like, you know, I really need a workout buddy. Sometimes you just need a partner in crime um, to get you going if you can't find it within you. So I'm just here to encourage you to uh, just start. I'm starting. I started this June 21st, okay? This is just from Costco. It's the croissant containers, which they are perfect for the um, pellets. You can buy, these are the Jiffy pellets. I buy them I buy them off of Amazon. I like the really tall ones. So the um, the plants, uh, the, the, uh, the start can have more space for their roots. So less I have to disturb them when I transplant them. But I'm, I'm still planting. It's the end of June and I'm still planting. And I have the next batch that I'm planting too. So look, in my cloche, my plastic cloche, I still have, Oh, that's dry. I gotta water it. 
I still have things that I am still planting. So even if you have a short growing season, you can still find varieties that will fruit um, in like 30 to 45 days, even 50 days. You have cucumbers, you have zucchini, you have um, a lot of your container vegetables. You can get um, the fast growing varieties. So you, you can at least get one, possibly two harvests. So don't give up, uh, watch the videos and then go online or find a neighbor, a friend or someone and try to find those um, fast growing um, varieties. All right, so that's with that over. So the tomatoes, I have hundreds of tomatoes. They're just all green. Now, here's the thing. So in my next video or one of my videos, I'm going to show you what I saw on um, Jacques um, video, which, um, you know, Jack um, in the garden with Jacques, you know, he's the sidekick um, of Eric from Epic Gardening. So no, 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 I'm sorry. Um, the guy from the Millennial Gardener, I forget his name, but he showed this trick and it's, apparently it was an old trick where you take an electric toothbrush and you, you put the tooth, the electric toothbrush, the vibrating toothbrush on the backs of the flowers of your tomatoes and uh, a puff of pollen will come out and it helps to make the, um, the tomatoes fruit faster. Um, the reasoning being is that the tomato flower is like a perfect flower where the male and female parts are together within the flower. So when you put the electric vibration on the flower, it, you know, they do what they do and then um, your plants fruit. It works because I did it on the bottom and look, I have all of these. Now I have uh, tomatoes all over this plant, but look how much I have. I mean, like clusters. It is a cherry 100, but not all of these. Like, I mean, I have like one here, three, you can see. You know, couple here. You know, one here. <laughs> these are cherry 100s, right? But the ones I did on the bottom, that was, that was my test. I have, and I'm sure the others will come, they'll catch up, but they actually, the ones that got the vibration, definitely this one, because it was easy to access, it really took off. Well, I, at first, just use my fingers, and what you do is you just flick your finger. I'm gonna show you really quickly. So you're gonna take your finger very gently and flick the flower, and then you'll see um, the pollen come out. Okay, if you, flick, if you flick it too hard, or if the flower is old, it will just fly away, but watch for the pollen. Hopefully I don't break my flower. Did you see that? I know y'all saw that. <laughs> Did y'all see that? How cool is that? That is such a wonderful trick. I love those old timey uh, tips and tricks and hacks. So hopefully you guys saw that. I'll try to um, do a slow-mo so you can see it. But that worked. So I'm gonna come out here with my toothbrush because sometimes I flick the flowers off the stem. So we don't, don't do that, but it works. So, okay, let's move on. Um, okay, so I've been growing, um, pl uh, planting some more seeds. I have some chamomile in here looking crazy. Uh, don't ask me why I put the uh, the paper towel in there is drying out. I need to water it. Um, I transplanted my strawberries that were upstairs. So I brought them down here and they're doing fine. It's, um, they do get afternoon sun. So I, I'm just trying to keep them in the shade. But I mean, I had so many runners. Most of these are from runners. And then they started producing more runners. So I will have a lot of strawberries. And this is a planter I got from, I don't know, I think Home Depot but and I have the hay in that let me flip it and I have the hay in here which I really like it especially for these kind of planters because I don't like the soil splash back um some basil my apple tree is finally fruiting this is the first um tree that's fruiting and I do have a video where I talk about that you see how bare it is but it's starting to come together I have some apple trees out there that I need to pull in here they're in a pot uh what is this uh, sweet pea perennials. Um, I planted um, another, I planted a Mongolian um, 
sunflower. This is the, you know, the mammoth, but I also have the Mongolian, which is even bigger than the mammoth. My struggle asparagus beans, I should, I should, you know, you know my issue with the birds. So they're starting to come up, but because a lot, I lost a lot of those seeds to the birds, I have some more planted here and then I'm going to put some more here. So, um, I'm still planting. These are flowers. I pulled the, uh, the India Florida broadleaf mustards. They're going to be upstairs. Um, um, also, so really with this month for January, I was just doing a lot of transplanting or dropping seeds. As you can see here, these are just, um, let me show you. These are just your um, Arrowhead uh, one gallon water bottles. I cut the top off and then they make perfect uh, containers for your plants that way your plants can really develop a root system before you transplant them so i mean i have more tomatoes um i have some squash i have herbs and i have some mexican salvia which they grow crazy around here and they're gorgeous i took some cuttings from my salvia upstairs and i'm gonna um, put these downstairs they grow big they literally would take up like six to seven feet wide and i don't have a space but i'm gonna have to cut it um my blackberries, my triple crown blackberries are really taking off. Remember, um, I told you my neighbor, the tree people broke one of the big branches. So I have it here in a pot to, you all see that? Let me flip it. I have it in a pot so I can resurrect it. Um, I'm trying to root it. So we'll see if that takes, and I have some dazzling blue. Um, kale from upstairs i'm bringing a lot of stuff from upstairs downstairs uh, i have some more squash this is fort hook um, with some kale um, some mint uh, lavenders they don't get a, that much sun which is why you don't see a lot of flowers but as we round into july and august it will be a burst of flowers this is the lilac um, vine that i pulled that was by the front of the garden gate it was just taking up too much space so that had to go um y'all don't laugh at me okay this is going to go <laughs> let me explain okay i have tool that i'm going to put on this but i'm redoing my patio upstairs and i moved everything off to the side and in one of my boxes where i have my garden accessories i need to find a central place for my garden accessories and tools um the tools back there so i'm not going to get to my tool which is just like a muslim um kind of fabric I had to put this up. This is what I have for the birds, but um, the the squirrels. You know, my neighbor told me that the squirrels drop peaches in his yard. I'm like, oh, that's where half of them are going. So they're very um, annoying and very disrespectful. But I note. Oh shoot! Oh man, they got more. I had some on top. I gotta get that tool today. Dang it! I gotta get that tool today. Okay, so I'm gonna make this shorter because I am, and you know what? I don't even wanna put a target on my peaches by saying, oh, I can't wait to have this one because I think that the squirrels are somewhere underground listening with a cup to the ground. Like, oh, she want that one? Oh, that must be a good one. Let's go. Zero dark 30. So I'm not even gonna say anything, but I am gonna put tool here, like a real fruit netting. Um, let see, I moved my lemon lime, my key lime here. Remember I told you the Fuji is not doing anything, so it's got to go. So it's not paying rent and food or anything, so it's going. So when I get to it, when the weather, well, it look, I think it's dead. So I really should just dig it up, which I think. I might, I might give it a little chance just to see if it does put out some kind of root or some kind of leaf or something, but I don't know. My moringa, still struggling, but y'all said don't do anything. It will come. Here, watch out. And it, now, mind you, it was lush with all kinds of leaves. Now it's just a stick, just a twig, like that apple tree over there. 
but I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to um, order some moringa seeds because Mrs. H, um, Homestead Heart on her channel, she says she has grown moringa seeds, um, moringa trees from seeds quite successfully. So I'm encouraged about that. So I'm going to stop buying the trees because I bought them three times and I'm going to get the seeds. So the triple crown blackberry is starting to take over and I'm going to have to um, get that um, trellis up, which I do have. Um, okay, this I just rigged this, but... <laughs> Um, this is not going to be the permanent structure. This is just like a sketch. It's like a blueprint of how this is going to be. So I'm thinking that when you come in from the alleyway. Okay, so I'm in my alleyway. So when you come in through the alleyway, right, you'll see an arch. An arch like that full of berries. That's the plan. So we'll see. Well, while I'm in the alley, I might as well talk to you in the alley. So one thing I've done, I moved a lot of stuff. I had a lot of junk here. Um, it was nicer the other day because I swept all the dirt. But once I get all the dirt put away and stuff, I'm going to put grass between, I mean, ground cover between the stepping stones. I'm thinking of pulling the, um, the bamboo. I don't know where I'm going to put it, but I think I want to grow like some butternut squash, some winter squash. I'm not sure, but I mean, it's starting to um, get tall and I do like it. I don't know. So I have my squash over here. And these are my um, patty pans. Uh, let's see if you can see here, let me flip it. So here are my patty pans. So I did put out a video, I don't know, I haven't posted it yet, of me fertilizing um, the patty pans because as you can see, I have a lot that don't get fertilized and so i had to hand pollinate a couple of them but these they're just not making it and it's quite annoying because you see the fruit or the vegetable and you think you're going to have something and then they just and then they look like this which is what we do not want so we want nice beautiful healthy squash like that but i did hand pollinate the ones that look really nice, I hand pollinated those. The others, the leaves were already closed. I tried to do something, but it was like hit or miss. But this one, I definitely hand pollinated. So it's looking nice and strong. Uh, let's see, oh, I've got a mail to this one. This one's ready to go. Let's see, now that's another mail. See if there's anything I need. Well, I'm kind of late because it's 11 o'clock. The best time to pollinate is in the morning when the leaves are open. So I have um, a pickling, a cucumber, um, my watermelon's looking nice. Uh, that's Black Diamond, and I don't know what the other one is. This one, I don't think it's gonna make it. I don't think it's gonna make it. But that's okay, because I have this one, and I have this one over here. And you see here, I have the Spanish Lavender um, to bring the bees, so this can be a love lounge of activity, so I can get more of my squash and soon to be watermelon. I have some more patty pans here. Oh, mm, that lavender smells good. And I overplanted. Um, these are variegated um, patty pans or scallop squash. I don't know why I that doesn't look like a patty pan. Who is you? Oh, it's a cucumber. Oh, I planted two of them. I didn't know. So these are our Boston picklings. These are heirlooms. So this one's taken off. Okay, I was wondering what this other one was. This um, squash on the end, this is a regular pumpkin. I grabbed this from the tomato area because it came up, you know, as compost. And it's, a, I think it's one of those big, large pumpkins. So I don't know. We'll see. This is my Zestful Lollipop Grape. I've had it for about four years. It never did anything. It was in a container on my patio and neglected. But now it's taken off. So um, I'm going to have to trellis that better. But it'll do for now. And then I have some miscellaneous things. I have some burdock some um, herbs here artichokes some plants uh, i like talking about no I, let me give them their shine these are just they have nice pretty blue flowers that's all i can say about it and then uh, the thompson um grapes which i don't really like but i don't want to get rid of them um raspberries here they're looking nice i'm going to grow those in a container um these are four different kinds of basil so Genevieve's Thai lemon and cinnamon so soon I will be transplanting those into these containers up here some milkweed for the monarchs that love that are, we have so many monarchs around here some more squash I don't even know I'm thinking this might be a Ford hook because 
I never, oh, yep, that's a zucchini. That is a zucchini. Um, this is a raspberry I planted like a year or so ago. This is the, oh, look, this is the first, first time I'm seeing grass. And I don't think it's, it's from the hay. So I'm just gonna throw this on the ground for now. Uh, more squash, I'm not sure what this one is. Probably zucchini, maybe zucchini. I like surprises, y'all know that. Allison. Some blackberries coming through for me. I gotta clean this up. Some foxgloves. You know, I'm trying to do more flowers. <sighs> Child, I went to town. I planted way too much squash. Okay, these are the straight necks. Okay, I have a whole bunch of those around the corner. Uh, more tomato plantings. Um, I need a water when I get out of here. More asparagus beans. Acorn. Now, I've never grown the acorn squash bush type, so I'm really excited to see how much I can get because it's a, a bush rather than a vine. These are my Jerusalem artichokes, also known as sunchokes. They are pretty tall. Can I, I've never grown them before, so I'm really excited. <sighs> I'm really excited to see what they're going to look like. I don't know why I planted another variegated squash. I'm just out of control. But look at this area. From before, this this used to be the scary area. And now I have, you know, it's looking lush. It's filling in nicely. I moved my geraniums here. And this is my Granny Smith apple. And I don't have any, I thought I saw, oh, I do have one apple right here. It's an apple. And now that it's got more sun because I cut the trees down, it should really take off. This is my elderberry tree that I got a cutting from, from Lead Farmer 73. And it is so tall. It is probably seven feet tall, or at least six, five, like the height of my nephew. Um, more, now this is, now I don't know what this is. Now this might be, I'm not sure if I planted something here. This is a Cocozel squash. I really like them. They're um, like a cream and white colored squash. I, I don't know if this is a straw, weed or not because i don't oh maybe it's a straw weed this would be the first time but i have a feeling i threw some garlic in here for whatever reason i don't know we'll find out though uh this is the apple that i'm going to espalier this is the honey crisp dwarf and it is showing no signs of life but i'm not good oh wait nope oh wait I don't know. Nope. I don't know. Is this part of the tree? Is this a sucker? I'm not sure. Um, but I did, you know, plant it months back. So I, I probably won't see anything for a while. But there you go. These are my blue Adirondack potatoes, which I've never grown before. So I'm excited. So they are really taking off. They're really taking off my lemon balm. This, now finally, I'm really happy. So this is my turmeric patch. Now this is the original turmeric right here that's taken off, but notice here, this is the black slash blue turmeric. Now, uh, I did a video where I showed you what the turmeric looks like when you cut it. It is literally blue inside, and it has a lot more um, nutrients than the orange turmeric, but it's starting to uh, take form and sprout. So, and I bought a lot, but it's not, it's moving very slowly. So I might have to buy some more. Um, this is my Eureka lemon. I picked all the lemons off, but now that it's getting sun, this is going to take off because lemons grow crazy here. Okay, guys, I'm going to hurry up because I have to water these plants. So here, um, this is my asparagus. It's a mix of Mary Washington and, um, I forget the other variety. I have two varieties here. So they're ferning out. I'm just gonna let it fern out. I've moved it so many times. I know it needs a permanent bed like the artichokes, but um, that's kind of how we're rolling. So this this will be the permanent bed. And so you, you see, I do have some stalks, but it's just, I'm just letting it fern just to do its thing. And then um, I'll pay more attention to it tomorrow. I mean, next season but not right now it's just there i'm just i'm trying to see if it likes that spot this is my um green collard tree um collard green tree now this i dug up it was over there by the other collard tree right here so i had three in a row which was two too many so i pulled two out and i um transplanted the other two 
and um, it was drooping man she was not happy but she's perked up now so i'm happy about that now what i'm leaning on is um one of the trellises i pulled um out from behind one of the trees so i have um cucumbers what do i have here i forgot what i was gonna plant here okay so i know i'm doing cucumbers here and i'm doing cute okay i'm doing pickling cucumbers over there and then um eating cucumbers here so i forgot why i put this up here oh i do have zucchini i have black beauty zucchini and i need to move one because as you can see they're too close together you see one two too close together and why i did that because i don't know what i was thinking I was, oh, I'll just set it here for a second. And then I think I moved to a different spot. I don't know. Sometimes I'm just, whatever. Oh, this is a hollyhock. All right. I thought this was a cucumber. Oh, the cucumber is next to the hollyhock. All right. So this is a fig tree that um, I transplanted and hopefully it makes it. This was a gift from a neighbor. Um, some blackberries. These are patio blackberries. Stevia, which takes so long to grow, but uh, especially if you're trying to grow from seed. I bought a start and then I, I bought seeds and it just took forever for the seeds to sprout. Here's another hollyhock, which because it's hiding under the canopy of the tomatoes, it's, it's you know, it's small. It's quite small, but I'm gonna make a way for her so she can have her full glory. And I have my black mission figs. And they have just, now this fig has been all around the world in this garden. And she, this baby should be like 10 feet tall. I've had her for like five years. She has moved every year, like she's in the military. So um, we're not gonna do that. We have a permanent home, especially now that we have sun. So the figs are like, yes, mama, we gonna listen, we gonna come out and play. And so I have lots of figs on the tree so i'm really excited about that and all right almost done guys okay so here i have my crick neck or is it straight nope i have my straight neck squash in the shade which it needs sun but i'm still getting a little harvest so i'm pleased with that i did um pollinate two of them i don't remember which ones but i did pollinate them and um they're really taking off let me flip them yeah so they're really taking off so i'm i really need to move this into the sun but apparently they're doing fine in part shade so i might just keep this here the um the straight necks just to see if they can really produce now what i am doing and you can't see it well actually because i haven't really done it full out I'm going, now I have two plants in one pot. I'm going to remove all of the stems and just keep uh, a leader, like just one stem that just fruits with the fruit. So once the fruit, where you see fruit, is only gonna keep fruiting above, above, above. It's not gonna keep fruiting down here. So once they're done down here, you can just take all these off, even the big leaves like this, cut it all off and then put a stake in and then just grow this vertically. So I did this last year, it was really great. And I'm gonna show you in another video how I'm going to do that, okay? That way, you know, squash takes up a lot of space and usually I would just trail them on the ground, but um, you can really get a lot bang for your space by growing them vertically. My purple tree collared tree, wait, my purple collared tree it's looking really nice. I have about four or five of them. I don't know where they are. I think they're hidden behind trees, but they're small because they're not getting any sun. But that's in the pot as well. And if you'll notice, all right, sidebar. So I cut that, well, my son, my son cut that sucker down. So that's, oh, I'm sorry. No, don't fall. Okay. So that was the stump, which I have to come back in and cut that down completely. Um, this is going to be a future home for some plant. Uh, what are you? You're an orange. I know that. Oh, it's a miniola and a volunteer avocado from compost. So I just got avocados everywhere from compost. 
because I eat a lot of avocados. But uh, I'm going to put some flowers in here when I have a chance. And from um, some more trees. And I think that's it, y'all. Oh, hold on. I have one more spot. So, um, I see. What do I have here? Okay, so these are like flowers. These is bergamot. Uh, this is cilantro. Moroccan cilantro. More herbs. Um, mint. Lemongrass. Lemongrass mint. Uh, Italian parsley. My coriander. Where my cilantro is going to seeds. Seeds. So I'll let it turn into coriander and then collect the seeds. More mint. Um, chives. More um, ginger. You see how it's coming up too. It pushes up. Because I plant these pretty deep, but not too... Well, I, I plant them deep because I know they're going to push up and break the surface, which is fine. Um, a volunteer tomato, which I should pull. Um, black... Uh, that's zucchini. I think that's the Ford Hook or the Black Beauty. Oh, so I have some dill here and more ginger. I grow a lot of din ginger. Aloe right there. Lemon verbena stuck in there. Hmm, the moringa. Oh, avocado. So I have two avocado trees. I have the bacon and the hoss. The other avocado is out there with my back for buttons. Thank you guys for telling me what that plant was. And um, I have some apples out there. So my elephant garlic is going strong. It's, it looks pretty good, actually. Let me see if you can smell the leaves. Nah, nothing. Swiss chard, I planted a whole bunch of those in um, there. So I'm gonna wait for that to come up. Got the bright light Swiss chard, dinosaur kale, I think red Russian or something. Um, the other kale I do have upstairs, so that's a raspberry coming up. And then just flowers, hummingbird feeders, flowers that need water desperately. And let's see, um, some thyme that's looking dry. I planted some more flowers along the area here. Um, some Shasta daisies. Oh, that's Italian parsley. Sage. Okay, with the tomatoes, ugh, it's so much. It's kind of, it's wild. There are only four plants here, but it's very thick. So maybe this weekend, I think it's going to be cooler this weekend. I'm going to go through here and pull all the suckers a lot of suckers oh, i'm a sucker for not being on top of pulling the suckers like here okay i'm gonna go through pull the suckers and um have my electric toothbrush to help pollinate the flowers now this is uh, my pineapple tomato it doesn't look as lush because two of the branches broke you see how i had to tie them up they broke but there it's still going strong it took some abuse takes a beating keeps on Ticking or whatever that. What is that? Ener the Energizer Bunny? Capes takes a look and keeps on ticking. But it's, oh, look at this. Look how beautiful that is, y'all. Look at all the ridges. Like a little baby's butt. Look at that. Look at those. Look at those folds. I haven't seen one this big on here, and I've never grown pineapple tomatoes before. Let's see if I can give you a better picture. Look at that. I'm afraid to touch it because it might break. Oh, snap. Look. It looks like that even when it's small. I thought it was because it was big. But look at this small one. You see? Look at that. Look at that. I haven't had tomatoes that I've noticed. Lots of flowers, but not tomatoes because, again, and I told you, so many of the branches got broken. But... Oh, here's another one. Hold on. See, now when you see one, you start to see more. Look at that one. Look at that. So pretty. Look at all those ridges. I love it. Look at that. Look at the little butt. Look at that. What kind of squats you be doing? Look at that. Oh, did one just fall down? I heard something fall. Oh, I don't see anything. Hmm, let me leave it alone. Let me leave it alone. Now my brand new wines are taking their sweet time with fruiting. Flowers, but not 
fruiting, but, but that's also because it's been overcast for two months. So with this sun starting to come out, we should really get more fruit. Plus, I only did that experiment with the toothbrush on the bottom of the cherries. So I'm gonna do that for all of the, um, the tomatoes. Oh, I'm gonna, I got some caterpillar damage. This is my Sam Marzano. I'll leave it there so they can come back and eat. It's a buffet. But these are my Sam so I'm happy with those. Those are nice. Okay, so <sighs> I'm tired. <laughs> and I still have to baby um, all of these cuttings or these seeds or these starts. Um, these are zucchini rounds. So um, they're, they're really small. They're, they're actually quite lovely. Really great for summer salads. They're about this big, maybe a little bigger, but they're round, the zucchini's round. Uh, and you put those in those pots. You saw those fabric pots around the corner. And then you see here how the zucchini is too close together. I'm gonna take one and move it over here. Um, bell peppers, some of the branches broke when I was moving the trellises, but some bell peppers, cayenne pepper, just a pepper family right here. Some garlic um, or some chives, not chives, I think it's garlic, it might be leeks. It's, it's in the Allium family. I'm not gonna wanna edit this video, but. So if you notice in all my pots, um, I have flowers. I planted flowers in all of them, just because, you know, I'm trying to bring more flowers and pollinators into my garden. And also I'm doing herbs too. So I have some calendula here because I killed them over there with the powdery mildew. They were just, I didn't realize how big they got, the variety that I bought. And so I had to pull them in, but I got the flowers to make, um, uh, soaps and salves and tinctures and stuff but then the flowers mildew and I dry them for like a week and a half anyway um ginger I have lots of ginger this is just another bucket of ginger and my pomegranate tree right here which y'all know I've been wanting to put this here for the longest but that tree was here okay um that's kind of it for now. I, mean, I do have a whole garden upstairs with lots of strawberries herbs uh tomatoes avocado, Australian fingerlings, um, sunflowers. I got a lot of stuff upstairs. Um, I'll do a video on that another day. I'm already tired. Um, but that is the garden tour for the end of June. What I'm hoping to show you come July um, will be the grapevine having a real proper trellis. I'm gonna treat it right. And for the zucchini or the cucumbers to to fill up the trellises. So hopefully by the end of July, um, the veggies will take off and all of this will just be just a wall of green, of cucumbers and zucchini. And then on the side, um, I hope to have a wall of watermelon, grapes, watermelon, grapes, and zucchini. So that's the plan for next month. So I'm just gonna go and finish planting the rest of those seeds and watering my plants. So thank you for hanging out with me. I know this is really long and it's uh, it's really like a talking head, but I really appreciate those who stick with me because it just um, makes me take inventory of what's going on in my garden and helps me see things that um, I might have missed already. So um, this is Nikki the Messy Homesteader encouraging you to keep growing, keep, start, start messy if you have to, but keep growing, keep sowing and keep gardening, okay? So it doesn't matter how big your space is, what you have, your means. Um, if you eat food and if you eat vegetables, you got seeds. So you start where you are and you'll be fine. So um, hopefully I can update you on all the new plantings and you can see that it's not too late right now. It's early summer, okay? So, um, okay, so um, that concludes our garden journey. So I'm closing the garden gate and I will be back next month with an update of hopefully my cucumbers and watermelons and grapes and zucchini. Hopefully they're climbing up the trellis, giving me a nice, beautiful green wall. So get out there, be self-sufficient. I love you guys. Thank you for hanging out with me and I'll see you on the next year. Bye-bye.